Yes, you are. Mm, well, let's see. It can't possibly be my boyfriend. We're not supposed to see each other till tomorrow. He, he was growing sick of me. Yeah, that was before he found out he was homeless and needed to put on the couch for the night. Please? Mm. Try again. B&B's booked. I'm on the couch myself until Tuesday. <sighs> Is it just me? Are you starting to get the distinct feeling that this town really didn't miss us all that much? It's like the reverse of it's a wonderful life. Everyone's better off without us. Except for each other. <laughs> so what do you want to do tonight? Want to grab some pizza, hang out on the boat? Or I was thinking maybe we could go catch a bad summer movie at the Dollar Fifty Theater. What do you say? Well, uh, actually, uh, Jen invited me to the diving. Uh, the dive-in? Everybody from school is going to be at the dive-in. To be perfectly honest, I don't think I'm prepared for that quite yet. Were well, you going to go without me? We can just go together. I think it'd be fun and, and healthy, you know, to see everyone. To see Dawson? Yes to see Dawson, which we've talked about, Casey, and it's no secret that I'm anxious to get things squared away with him. No, it's no secret. And to be perfectly honest, look, I don't really care where we go or what we do, as long as we do it together. we are. Andy, I know that my behavior of late has been a little bit confusing, and I'm really sorry for being so cold and so distant, but a lot of stuff has been happening, and I, mean, I don't even really know where to start. You can start by getting out of the car. Why don't I try starting at the truth? in my entire life, Andy. It kind of threw me for a loop. Why? You work so hard for it. Because it changes everything. Hey, don't you see? Everything has always been so predictable for me. But now, my whole life course is changing. And ever since you and I had sex, I felt anxious. Now, wondering, should we have waited? Should we slow down? Questioning whether or not it was the right thing to do wishing that I had taken the high road, and that's not me. You know, it used to be that the only comforting part about being Pacey Widow was that I always knew what to expect. And now, I don't have a clue, and I'm terrified. And that's why I was pulling away from you. It's okay to be scared, Pacey. I mean, the world is a scary, scary place. Casey, I don't want you to be scared of me. How can I not be, Andy? You're the one that's opening up this whole life for me. And I'm just, I'm afraid that... What? I'm afraid because you're the single most important being to ever grace my existence. Andy, I am falling hopelessly in love with you. Say something, because I did just kind of cut it open and lay it out for you. Yeah, that was pretty scary. That's it. That's all you have to say. No. I'll say that I share your fear. Your exact fear. <clears throat> you were in rare form tonight. 
How bad do I suck, huh? So what seems to be the problem? There's no problem, Dougie. Oh, come on, Pacey, I found you hanging from a tree getting completely wasted. Huh? So what is it, a girl or something? What? <laughs> okay, so it's a girl. Who is she? You know what, Dougie? It's really not that important, okay? Okay. I'll tell you something, though. She is really, really annoying. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, this girl is amazing. There is not a single subject on the face of the planet that she doesn't have an opinion about. It's mind-boggling. Well, that certainly sounds like a nightmare. Well, no, I mean, it's, no, it's not quite like that. I mean, you got to understand it. You know, the girl's really smart, so she's usually right. And when she argues, it comes from this really beautiful, pure place. So, I mean, how can you fight against that, you know, especially if you're a smart-ass like me? Is she pretty? Yeah, she is pretty. She is very, very pretty. She's actually the, the kind of pretty that gives you butterflies, you know what I mean? Ah, uh, yeah. Never lose the butterflies. What? You know, that's maybe what sucks most about getting older. Somewhere along the line, you just lose the butterflies. So the question is, little brother, what are you going to do about it? Do? Yeah, do as in do something. Take action. No, I don't think you're really properly grasping the gravity of this situation, Dougie. You see, if I was actually to do something about this, there is the strong possibility that the sun would cease to shine, that the tides would cease to rise. In fact, I'm betting there's a pretty good chance that the very earth would crack open and Cape Side would become home to a huge hellmouth that would spew forth endless hordes of monsters and demons that would choke the denizens of this city, making them fall to their knees and pray for a return to the days before I took action. That's really what we're talking about here. Huh. Yeah, maybe. Look, Pacey, uh, <clears throat> in my experience, you don't come across that many people with the ability to give you butterflies. You just don't. And if you don't tell this girl how you feel, well, it'll be like spending the rest of your life in your own personal prison. Hey, Doug? Yeah. Thank you. Come on, Miss America. Why do I feel like I'm about to set the women's movement back 20 years? Yeah, well, if I were you, I'd start filling out those Ivy League applications, all right? The competition does not look like much. This is unconstitutional. I assure you, Mr. Whitmer, there is nothing in the United States Constitution that says you have the right to enter this pageant. Yeah, and there's nothing in your rule book that says I can't, huh? Take a look. Tell this me. is the Miss Windjammer Jen, pageant. Jen, Jen, wait up. If you have a tendency towards... So what are you two doing here? Are you kidding me? Pacey is trying to enter the Miss Windjammer pageant? Why not? Last year, Ashley Elliott successfully sued to join the boys' football team. I think it's one of the more intrepid things Pacey's ever done. He's blown the gender gap wide open. So you ever going to speak again? Come on, Joe, say something. What do you want me to say, Pacey? You were right? You were right, okay? Right as always. Pacey Witter, the only person in my life who ever speaks the truth. That's not entirely accurate. Well, you told me what was going to happen. Which was what, Joe? What happened up there? <sighs> there was another girl. I'm sorry, Joe. You know, the whole time that I was watching them, I just kept thinking, this is it. This is real. Just like Pacey said, this is the real thing. And it reminded me once again what exactly I don't have. If you keep looking, you'll find it. I won't. I mean, isn't that obvious by now? I'm not meant to. Why? Because you're 16 and alone? Come on. 
No, because I'm 16, and in my entire life, there have been two people who have actually known me, Pacey, Dawson and... This AJ guy didn't know you. All right, I don't care how you felt about him, Joe. He didn't know you, because if he did, he never would have walked away. I was going to say you, Pacey. <sighs> okay. Have you totally lost it? No, not totally. Yet. <sighs> What did you mean by that? Well, what? About me knowing you better than anybody else. Exactly what I said, Pacey. You know me, okay? In a, in a way that nobody else besides Dawson ever has. We're not has, talking about so... Dawson right now. We're talking about me. I mean, you can't keep on doing this to doing me, Potter. what? What, so I count on you and I tell you secrets and, and you suddenly... And you call me in the middle of the night to pick you up. Why? Well, I'm sorry that I called. I thought that I... I'm could... not mad that you called me. I just want to know why you called me. You were the first person that I thought of, Pacey. And what does that mean, Joe? It means that... I guess it... It means that I can talk to you and that you're there for me. Don't you ever get tired of talking? No. No, well, I don't I get, get tired. tired. Well, I don't... No, I don't want to talk I, anymore. What are you trying to say, Joe, Pacey? Why are we standing? I don't... Comfort. Take comfort. Let me tell you, kiddies, we are looking good. Looking good. What canary did you swallow? Well, after having felt just a teensy, weensy little bit of guilt over having wrongfully inspired this establishment, I took it upon myself to expose the Potter B&B to the outside world via the mighty pen of Mr. Frederick Fricky. Fred who? Fricky. He's, uh, I don't know, he's like the, the Roger Ebert of the B&B world. He writes for travel, travel and leisure, and most importantly, he writes for the New York Times travel section, the next edition of which will have nothing but glowing things to say about this establishment because one Mr. Fred Fricky is frequenting here. He's coming here? Oh, yeah. He's on his way back to Boston right now. Just happened to fit right into his plans. I gave him a call. Are you insane? Have you seen the half-finished room? Have you tasted Bessie's blueberry pancakes? We're not ready for something like this, not to mention that we don't have any guests. I beg to differ. We do have guests. Not only do we have guests, we have the perfect guests for the perfect heartwarming weekend at your local B&B. Guests, if you would please. We have the sweet, God-fearing grandmother here to help her grandkids try to reconnect to the magical Creekside Village where she frolicked as a little girl. I'll need an 8 a.m. wake-up call. Yeah. And I take my OJ freshly squeezed. Black coffee for me. And God help you if you wake me before noon. And just to make sure that our home is filled with happy, boisterous people, we have a loving married couple here to spend a romantic weekend getaway. Did you? Yeah, put all the stuff back, yeah. Though some of it we're gonna have to pay for. I'd like the clothes. Pacey, did you? If the next words out of your mouth are take out the trash, I will officially have a preview of what it'd be like to be married to you. And? It ain't pretty. I was going to say, did you know? Did I know what? This was a dream come true. Which part? All of it. When you and I were on the boat, I used to dream that we'd be cast away somewhere. You know, your standard tropical island with the white sand beaches and giant stars overhead. We'd wear no clothes, and we'd splash in the surf all day. And then at night, the moon would be this, this giant thing. And it was always full. I like this fantasy. I can catch fish with my bare hands, make fire without matches. I'd make the fires. Who paid attention in science class? Okay, good point. Besides, it's my fantasy. And I guess I never told you about it before because it's embarrassing, you know? I mean, it's not at all original. In any case, you were right about one thing. What's that? There are about a thousand reasons why you and I would never work. There's one thing in the pro column. 
Jesus. What does it mean? Well, it means that well, I'm cold. Oh. I'm still thinking about it. Oh, Mr. Pace. I miss you too. I don't have any answers right now, okay? Can't you understand that? <laughs> the only reason that you don't have answers is because you've been too scared to ask yourself the right questions. What are you talking about? Look, I know how I feel. You know how I feel. That much is obvious by now, but during this whole process, we've managed to miss the point. Because the point is not how I feel, it's how you feel. So how do you feel? Awful. That's how I feel, Pacey. I feel awful. So do I. When I was kissing you tonight, I don't think that I've ever felt better and worse at one time in my entire life. I mean, the very idea that Dawson or Andy would find out about us is killing me. It is tearing me up on the inside to have these feelings for you, but I can't get rid of them. I can't keep on kissing you, Joe. What do you mean? I mean just that. I can't keep on kissing you. All right? I've done it twice now. I can't be the one that's always initiating this. I can't be the one who's always giving you the answers. <laughs> Look at me, Joey. Yeah. Please. If you felt even one shred of what I feel for you, then we wouldn't be standing here having this conversation. steps right here whoa stop right there perfect we're here you see i don't know where you think here is but it seems to me we're nowhere think back with me for just a second do you remember how this whole thing started it started with a girl a wall and a paintbrush you bought me a paintbrush no lamo i stole this from your permanent collection you bought me a wall not bought rented and this thing didn't come cheap either it cost me a hundred bucks you bought me a wall you said that already Look, it's a limited time offer, so you should get cracking. <laughs> Pacey, did you fail to notice the size of this thing? Well, I just thought your next endeavor should be bigger and better than your last one. Now, it's important that you keep on growing both as a person and as an artist. I also got you this. Now, I know it's not going to cover the whole thing, but as the saying goes, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I'm going to need your help on this one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not this time. You're on your own, sister. Pacey, you're unbelievable. I mean, as soon as I think I have you all figured out, you go and you do something so outrageous that I mean, completely challenges me in a way that no one else would even think of, but... <sighs> in case I don't say it enough. Thank you. It's about time, Potter. It's about time. I've been meaning to ask you something all night, Pacey. Would you like to dance with me? Yes. How come 
this feels so right. Think it was those dance lessons. Why did you get those? They're not you. Why, because I'm just a poor tomboy, or... Dawson gave them to me. Neither. See this? This is you. It's not showy or gaudy. Just simple. Elegant. Beautiful. It's my mom's bracelet. I know. How do you know? Well, because you told me. Six months ago. You were wearing that uh, blue sweater, the snowflakes that you have. You were walking down the hallways at school. I was annoying you as per usual. I said, look, Basie, I just found my mother's bracelet this morning, so why don't you cut me some slack? <laughs> Remember that? with you? Essentially, yeah. Good night, Pacey. Andy. Andy. I'm not sleeping with you, Pacey. And Joey, I don't think we know each other well enough. No offense. I'm taken. Okay, look, we're just gonna have to make the best of this, all right? If I so much as feel Joe, anything... Joe, get in bed. While you're at it, get over yourself. Casey, get your butt away from me. My butt wants nothing to do with your butt, okay? But give me some of these covers, man. Joe. Joe. Tonight on a very special episode of Cape Side High. It's Jack Cohen, can you believe this? It's ridiculous. Why? Why would they do this? Mr. McPhee? Yes? Would you care to continue reading your now very public work of poetry? You can't be serious. I am. You left us high and dry. If you want a completed grade, then you have to complete reading the poem. It's that simple. Why are you doing this to me? Because he can. Mr. Witter, I recommend you sit down. No. I said sit down. You want somebody to read the poem, I'll read it. Today. <clears throat> Today was a day. The world got smaller, darker. I grew more afraid. Not stop of what I am, instant. but of what I could be. I, I loosen my collar to take a stop. breath. My eyes fade, and I You see will it. listen to me when I talk to you, young man. Why should I? Oh, that's it. I am writing you a pass. You can report immediately to Principal Markham's office. What part of you is it that gets off on torturing your students? Everybody else in this classroom may be afraid of you, but I'm not. I see your miserable scare tactics for exactly what they are. The misguided lashings of a bitter, lonely old man who only feels good when somebody else in the class feels worse. Thank you for the analysis, Mr. Witter. I'll send a check along with the F you'll get on your report card. You can't fail me. I've gotten a B or better on every test in this class. Hell, I can't. I've been waiting to fail you all quarter. You disgust me. 
And you, Mr. Witter, are a failure. Destined to always be a failure. Trying to teach people like you is like spitting in the face of the entire educational system. <laughs> no, sir. That is spitting in the face of the entire educational system. William Wallace, but I am Pacey Witter. Pacey Witter's seven feet tall. So they say. So they say. And they say that this Pacey Witter is a dangerous man who slaughters Capeside residents by the dozens with jokes and buffoonery. And if he were here, he would destroy those who would judge him with sparks from his eyes and wit from his ass. <laughs> well, I am Pacey Witter. But who of you? are in the position to judge me. Is it you, sir? And what sort of human being tolerates being judged? Well, judgment stops today, because that which scorns me deems to own me. And I am willing to trade the trappings of my dysfunctional life for one chance, just one chance, to stand in front of my fellow countrymen and tell them that you may take my life, but you will never take my freedom! Thank you and good night.